Yo, okay, there we go. Nice. What's going on? How's everybody doing? Oh, wait, why am I, uh, why am I small? There we go. Uh, yeah. So, you guys ready? You guys pumped? You guys excite? Let me just get the, uh, Trying to line it up perfectly here. Why is it being so difficult? Whatever. Good enough, I guess. Yeah, whatever. So, you guys ready? We still gonna call him Beta Fett after this? Or are we gonna... Oh wait, it's out? Did someone say it's out? You guys trolling me. I don't know with half of you sometimes. Oh, it is out. 53 minutes, dude. Finally. Jesus. Okay, you guys ready? They're like dropping these 5, 10 minutes early nowadays. It's interesting. Um, Obi-Wan, ground power, Palpatine, Senate. Our Vader, your father, power, Luke. That's impossible. What? I don't know what the hell you're saying. But thank you. It's out already, 52 minutes. Okay, let's roll. Let's go. Okay, three, two, Still watching the recap. Okay. Okay. Now it's on sync. There we go. Let's roll. Yo! 
Boba got a... Dude, he's got a Rancor again? Oh, what? Damn, I thought it was like the baby Rancor from uh, Bad Batch. Those, those Gamorreans are full-on powerlifters, so you just know it. Finally, he's got his helmet on. Damn.
What? The hell is there? Oh, damn, what? Oh, damn. <laughs> They're so jiggly. Damn, dude. No, yo, that can't be... Are you... F Did they put Chrysanthemum in here? Holy shit. Dude, no way. Yo. Yo, this is getting hot. Shit. Let's go, baby. Let's go, baby. Uh -huh. Dude. Buddy.
Damn, that's like the scariest wolf I've ever seen. Yo, is that a girl? I think that's a girl, dude. Yo, you think he's gonna have, like, some romantic interest with the... I, if it's a girl, you think he's gonna have, like, a romantic thing with her? With the Tuscan? It's training him? What the... F Are those the pikes? It was were those the pikes, dude? Pike syndicate?
Yo, keep in mind, this is re during Return of the Jedi. Okay, it's not the pikes. <sighs> Yo, it's Tashi Station. Those two people are um Luke's friends. <laughs> cool, man.
Oh no. The <laughs> kid is so funny.
Dude, they are. It is the Pikes. It is the Pikes. I knew it. <laughs> Bro, this is this is too badass, man. It's like a freaking video game. Oh, here we go. Oh, wow. Ha, <laughs> That was the same sound the Slave 1 makes.
Damn. Yo, they upgrading big time. Wow. What a beautiful episode, man. Yo, are they going to talk about a lightsaber? Oh, what?
Dude, he tripping hard, man. Damn, bro. Here we go.
Okay. <clears throat> Let's take it a minute there. Uh, just listen to the music and, and the credits. This episode was my favorite episode of any Star Wars show that they've ever created. By far. By far. Even Mando Season 2 finale. Uh, Mando Season 2 finale was amazing for me because Luke showed up. But it doesn't really make the episode amazing. I just love that portion because of the character. This episode had so much backstory, it had so much lore, it had so much heart and passion and energy. I really connected with it. I love these kinds of stories that show the backstories and like um, when like an outlander kind of becomes one with the, the natives of the land. You know, like um, for example, like Last Samurai is like one example. Um, these kind of stories are what I really enjoy in movies and shows and storytelling in general. For me, this episode was a 10 out of 10. Uh, I would give it a 11 out of 10 if I could. It doesn't really make sense to do that. But uh, honestly, for me, this was, this was beautiful. It was amazing. There isn't too, too much to break down. You just got to follow the story and, and follow along. And it honestly is... Very, very nice. Very nice storytelling. The storytelling in this show already, I feel like, is... I don't want to say a step up from Mandalorian, but it just feels like... I don't know, it just resonates with me a little bit better. Um, okay, so we saw the Pike Syndicate. That's cool. The Pike Syndicates are basically... Uh, they travel... They sm not smuggle, but they travel spice through different worlds. They're spice sellers. And spice is like a drug. And it goes for a lot of money. If you remember the Martez sisters uh, dropped the whole buttload of it out of the ship with Ahsoka in Clone Wars Season 7. Spice is pretty cool that they brought that back in there. Uh, it also has a bit of a tie into to Corellia with um, Solo, which again makes me think of Kira. Maybe she could be coming back. I don't really know. I think she will. Oh, dude. I mean, I gotta watch this episode again for me to really know everything going on because it was just such a trip. It's, dude, his trip at the end with seeing like seeing scenes from the Clone Wars that, are, that we have never ever seen before, or from Attack of the Clones, was really cool to see, man. Like seeing Boba run along uh, the halls in Kamino and uh, seeing Django leave. It's a sweet dude. This is pretty cool. I love it. Okay, what are you guys thinking? What do you guys say? Let's see. Definitely the most Star Wars thing I've seen in a long time. Did you like the episode? Yes or no? Ask your community. Okay. Go ahead and vote. The poll is up. Um, let me bring up the chat here. There you go. All right. Okay. Yo, Mike, I hope you feel better, buddy. 97% uh, enjoyed the episode. That's great. Over a thousand of you voted so far. Nice. Yeah, honestly, dude, it's my favorite episode. Easy 10 out of 10. Easy. In your breakdown of episode one, you forgot to mention that the droid dealer in the cantina was the name was the same droid as Rex from old Star Wars Tours ride at Disney. Cool. Yeah. Yeah, I wouldn't know. Oh, that one. That dude that pops up on your left. Cool. Bro, this is Star Wars. 100%. Han Solo movie vibes. Psst. Beta Fett. Dude, yeah, dude, nobody's gonna say Beta Fett after this, man. And if they do, I'm sorry. That's I'm sorry you feel that way. Was the leader of the Pikes group wearing a Darth Maul mask? No, I don't think so. Was he? Don't believe so. I think he was just wearing a, a regular Pike mask. Bro, he's one of them. Yeah, he's basically a Tuscan now. He's been kind of like indoctrinated into their tribe. This is why I've always loved Boba. Knew there was more to him. I love the fact that they incorporated a lot of like native vibes in there you know like i, I feel like the, the sand people are the natives of tatooine and their land has been handed down to them from their forefathers and before them even so and they know like all these cool like 
little hidden pathways and they know the dune sea like the back of their hand and they know all these cool little things like that the lizard like no regular person on tatooine is going to be able to do something like that like they know like i love that i love how they incorporate all these the mysticism that comes into these characters and i love that we're able to now kind of connect with the tuscan raiders and not just see them as you know barbaric beings i bet there's probably going to be some sort of a connection between them and uh Anakin somehow, maybe, with like a Force user. The sand is strong with you, a powerful Tuscan you will become. Henceforth you shall be known as Darth Boba. Yo! Wait, I missed it. How do huts reproduce? <laughs> what a beautiful episode, in my opinion. To the hidden ways of the sand people, so interesting. I love it. I hope to see a little bit more. What do you think, Star Wars Theory? I think it's an amazing episode. 10 out of 10. And seeing black chrysanthemum in there it's the first time we see him in canon and if you don't it, like in uh in live action if you don't know who he is he is a ruthless bounty hunter i'm pretty sure that's who he was he is the most evil powerful wookie i have ever come across what a badass episode and they said filler lameo yeah whatever who cares what they say let's see what that guy says now if this is uh this episode gives him polio what does this episode give him Malaria reminded me of the movie Dances with Wolves. Last Samurai is a perfect example. Another brother, this episode is perfect. Boba for the win. Yeah, I'm very excited to see what people are going to say about this. Are they going to not like it? or This is the most Star Wars thing I've seen in a long time. Yeah, dude. That's the thing with this. It's This is finally written by people who understand Star Wars and directed by people who understand Star Wars. And I, I dig it, man. I'm very excited for the the ride. This movie had Dances with Wolves vibe. I literally related as a Native American, and it's Star Wars is paying respect to that. And I love that it's doing that, man. I have much respect for Native Americans. I took uh, Aboriginal studies in college. Perfect episode really flexed the themes of honor, respect, and tradition. Yeah, it was making me a little bit emotional, man. I, I got some feels from The Last Samurai. I got some feels from Gladiator, um, especially when he was making his, um, his gaffy stick. Like... The energy being put into that, you know, from a tree that he found upon being, you know, in this trance. Great episode. Would have given it a 10 out of 10, but my butt cheeks are hella sandy from all that sand. <laughs> that was 100% Black Chrysanthemum. So much Last Samurai vibe, and I loved it. Came as a prisoner, left as a respected member of their clan, 10 out of 10. Since 2017, you've pulled me deeper into the lore and beautiful stories surrounding the Skywalker saga. Thank you for per perpetuating this thing we all love theory. Let's go, Boba, 11 out of 10. Thank you, Anthony. That's a really nice message. Nice to get nice messages from you guys sometimes. That was Star Wars. Amazing and glad to be back, bro. Missed these watch parties. I missed these too. How you doing, Mr. Sharma? Happy 2022, man. This might be a stretch, but I feel like the first two episodes of Book of Boba has added more lore than the first two seasons. Yeah. I fully agree. Mando for me, like it's Mando's cool and it's got a cool story and you're kind of just invested because of Grogu. But if Grogu wasn't Grogu and it was like, I don't know, just like a fat baby or something, like a like a baby hut, you'd be like, okay, it's, yeah, I get it, but you're invested because it's a baby Yoda, and that's really kind of what carries the show quite a bit. And of course, you know Ahsoka and Luke and Mando is badass himself and. The show is great, but that's one of the really big things that's carrying it. This is like full on. We get to focus on one character. Uh, we don't have like a million different cameos coming in all the time. And I love this. This already for me is more of a favorite than Mando. This was great. 9 out of 10, but Mando still the best. It had a strong female presence. Saving Grogu. Din taking off the mask. Luke and that goodbye still gets me. Yeah, I mean, we can't judge... Fully, I guess. You know, you got two seasons of a show versus two episodes of a show. But for me, right off the bat, I'm already feeling Book of Boba way more. As a fan of the 80s Star Wars radio drama, seeing Kami and Fixer at Tashi Station was an awesome surprise. 9 out of 10. Can't wait for the next week. Yeah, I wonder if they know what Luke is up to. Do you think this is why he wears black under his armor rather than gray now? It's his sand people robes? Yeah. 100%. Literally a western. They rob a train. That Wookiee, holy unit, 9 out of 10 for me. So that Wookiee in the comics, he is like a total badass. He's done run-ins 
uh he's done um, um bounties with boba he's done them with uh i'll, I'll release a few videos on black or Santa. with vader even what's the poll at 4,400 of you, 96% loved it. 4% didn't like it. Watch it again, man. There's a ton of good stuff in there. Really love how they're giving the Tuscans development. I think the kid's my favorite character. I hope eventually they become part of the palace. <clears throat> so what I think is happening is Boba is starting to become leader um, where he least expects it. He... Is that Josh calling? He pretty much becomes leader in, I guess, with the Tuscans. See what Josh has to say. You. What up, bro? What'd you think? I liked it. I liked it. Um, dude, long episode. Tons of fun stuff in there. You get the pikes. You get... Uh, I think people in my chat were saying you pronounced the Wookiee bounty hunter's name as Black Croissant. Black Chrysanthemum. Like a Black Chrysanthemum. Yeah. Okay, well, people in the chat got it wrong. They said Croissant. Um, Close enough. But that was really fun. The Huts was awesome. Um, he, he, you know, we obviously get a whole bunch of Tuscan stuff, and it's him like, you know, it's really, really Western again. You know, like there's that trope, and they they do this trope in the first season of Mando too, where like. Uh, Cara Dune and, and Homie help the locals like prepare for this threat and everything. So right. he's like helping the locals again. Um, and then yeah, he gets he gets inducted fully into the tribe with the robes and stuff. And the crazy lizard brain thing was wild. So crazy. Yeah, overall, man, I really liked it. What what did you think? What were your thoughts? This is uh, my favorite episode of any Star Wars show that they've ever made. What? Yeah. Damn, that's yeah. high praise. Yeah, you're saying this, but no, no, it can't be better than the Luke one. You're not, you're better, not, better no, than no, no, no. better than the Luke one for me. What? Yeah, Luke, interesting. The Luke one okay. was great because Luke showed up, right? Mm -hmm. For me, but this one was better because it just felt like Star Wars, and it was just so spiritual and moving, and uh, I loved it. Yeah, no, that's fair. I mean, it, dude, it feels Star Wars all over. You know what I mean? And the other thing that's really interesting is this is de this sort of proves that that the only leak because there's only been one leak, and that leak is false. That leak was not real. You know what I mean? Uh, uh, what, because what by leak? now we'd be seeing some of those things. Uh, the leak about Kira and all that sort of stuff, like that. Unless like they pull that like laid off now. Now that's not true because these huts coming in that was nowhere. In any, that was not on anybody's it radar, and it's so badass, dude. Things are gonna get yeah, so yeah. hot. Yeah. Oh yeah. And I'm pumped, dude. It's kind of interesting to because uh, they have some secrets. Whatever is going on in this show, they've kept it very tight lipped because nobody was talking about this. And uh, I think it's awesome, man. It's crazy that they would show up to to Tatooine. You know what I mean? Like they just literally show up. Yeah. These are these are both Jabba's kids, like his twins. I don't know. I think so. I'm guessing. Yeah. I don't know who they are. I just yeah. know they're they're slugs. You know, they're huts. They're huddies. Yeah. Yeah. So super fun. And then that they're setting up a big fight with that uh that Wookiee dude, sense. man. Do you, do you know like... anything about him? Uh, so, all I know is that he's like just super badass. No, he, That's pretty he, much all I know. He's a bounty hunter. Right. He's a yep. very dangerous, dangerous bounty hunter. And like he's fought Vader. He's fought. He just he's been in all the comics. But we've never seen him in live action, so this is like he looks badass, dude. Yeah, he looks, dude, he looks so freaking cool. And so I guess you know Jabba or, or the twins hired this guy, and uh, he's like their muscle. Yeah, 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 yeah. And, it, and this is sort of the avenue and the route by which maybe they can bring in more muscle too, because he's, you got to think he's gonna face off against this dude, and uh, maybe either beat him or kill him or something, right? Or, like that. That's obviously. Or they yeah. they join and they become buddies, and you know, season two will be him and Fennec and Black Crescenton. That's true. He could like so, beat him and spare him or something so my like chat, that. But they're my chat saying they're cousins. Yeah. Oh, they're, they're cousins. cousins. Okay. Yeah. Oh, to Jabba then? Yeah, cousins to Jabba. Interesting. Okay, that's cool. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I love it, dude. No, I, I, I think it's awesome, and I think that Wookie dude looks hard as nails. He's also 
I mean, that's going to be a crazy fight, dude. No, oh, dude, it's going like, to be badass. And I bet you, like, they're probably going to throw in some other people, too. Like, maybe Cad Bane comes in. Maybe, you know, I don't know. Yeah, yeah. Who knows? Who knows what happens? Yeah, for sure. No, that's going to be super fun, man. I am I am hyped up. Uh, I'm hyped up for that I'm one. Very you think, uh, let me let me ask you this one, and then, uh, you know, I'll let you get back to the chat. What do you think about the fans how are the fans gonna feel about this one you think this is gonna be a turnaround for people or you think people are gonna be mad about so honestly, much honestly i don't give a crap because for me this episode was <laughs> the most star wars thing i have ever seen since revenge of the sith yeah i'm with easily you. i think i think it was pretty awesome i think you you like it a little bit more than i like it but i really definitely like it i, I mean yeah i yeah i dig the i dig the uh tribal aspect of it um i, I think it's super fun and then him like the dude the vision like that vision was wild like crazy it, i've never seen like the only time we've ever seen anything crazy like that in star wars i guess was with some of the stuff in uh the sequels right when ray's having that one vision in tlj but like because it was like trippy dude like it's it, and you get the camino shots like I'm. I, this is one of my favorite sequences in Star Wars. That's for well, sure. What, like this is. What it also shows is that they're going to be able to incorporate so many scenes from the prequels that we've never ever seen before. Yeah. You know. I mean, they yeah, they full on like superimposed um, Daniel yep. Logan's face. Yep, in that uh, mirror the shot yep. or the window. Yep. Yeah, yep. that. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, and more stuff like that. I am super down with. And then the, the it's just the it, pikes coming in and like like it's just yeah. there's so much there's so much the screaming crimson dawn that I feel like yeah. we're eventually gonna see Kira and we're eventually gonna see all those characters again. Yeah, I mean, you could definitely see that being set up for sure, man. But it's it's super cool, full of surprises. I'm excited to see where it goes from here. Me too, buddy. It's badass. Star Wars is hot again. Yeah, it's hot. So hot right now. Like Hanson. Maybe not that hot. Zoolander. Oh, okay. That's, that's too all right, brother. I'll let you go, man. And uh, we'll talk soon. All right. Okay, buddy. Catch you later. Later, chat. All right, brother. I love when Josh uh, calls in, man. It's cool. Uh, what a brilliant episode. Can't wait to see more. Love the flashbacks to episode two. Dude, I had major goosebumps. Hope to see Kira in the series. I believe we're going to see Kira. I didn't know that those were the, the rumors, but I wouldn't be surprised. Have the Twin Huts ever been seen on in the Clone Wars? I don't know. I don't think so. But their their tattoos look familiar. Unless that's it's not Jabba's son. Uh, no, I don't think we've seen them before. I know this is so off topic, but Tamora's veneers teeth, they were popping off this episode. I also really love this episode. Do you think he has veneers? And people saying he's like fat and all that. The guy had literal abs and he's like jacked. So I don't know what the hell they're going to say now. Amazing episode. My first ever watch party as well. Couldn't be happier. Keep up the great work. I'm just excited for next week. I'm excited to go downstairs, watch this on the big screen and do a breakdown. Like have my laptop in front of me and just. It's going to be dope. I hope you guys will watch it tomorrow. Dark Wookiee, Black Chrysanthemum. The episode was pretty good, but I don't think it was as good as the Mandalorian first episodes would be. Awesome if there was an open world game like this. <laughs> I wish, dude. Yeah, maybe one day. Maybe that's what they're working on. Was right about the Tusken Raiders having different tribes and cultures, by the way. Yeah, definitely. There's definitely a bunch of different ones. And they probably know about the, the tribe that got destroyed because of Anakin. I'm just guessing. And Vader. 10 out of 10 episode, Mega Boba Fett fan. Now I have to finish my Boba costume for Comic-Con. Why was Boba stronger in this, which takes place five years ago, than in the last than he was in the last episode, which was five years later? I think he was just as strong, if not stronger, in the present day. I just think that you guys aren't understanding, <clears throat> or some people aren't understanding, that he was literally ambushed and surrounded by a whole bunch of dudes with freaking... Um, reflective, deflective ray shields in front, like shields in front of him. Like he tried to bounce, like jump off them, and he was just like bouncing off. And it's like, what are you gonna do? You're outnumbered. I mean, anybody who's gonna be outnumbered by what was it, like six, seven, eight people? It's not gonna be a good time, especially if they have you literally cornered in a wall. 
that being said, he could have used his jetpack and gotten out of there, I feel like. But, you know, then, you know, he has Fennec to worry about. She's a liability at that point. Because she's really, she's a good assassin and she's a good sharpshooter, but she's not Boba Fett. So. And plot armor. Another Western theme and vibe with the train. Was good, but would have preferred more present day. Dude, I'm loving it. I am loving it, man. I'm loving these flashbacks. Do you think Boba is going to give Tatooine to sand people? No, I don't think he can. It would be cool, but I don't think he can. And I don't think sand people want all of Tatooine. They just want the Dune Sea. Paul Taylor, what's up? Way better episode. Definitely more interested in the series now. I just really want to see more new story. In your opinion, what is being done to pro progress Star Wars narrative versus just going backwards? What's being done is episodes like this, my man, and hopefully episodes going forwards that are going to be just as good, if not better, and Kenobi. Which, look, I mean, if it's going to be trash, dude, you know I'm going to talk and speak freely. But it was great. I loved it. I thought this episode was fantastic. It had everything I wanted. And the Hut's coming back with Black Chrysanthemum, it sets up so much stuff. Plus, we're getting, like, basically two stories in one when he's going back in time. And we're getting the entire spiel of him and the Tuscans. Tamorison got to show off his warrior background. 10 out of 10 for me. Yeah, the Maori man. I believe he's uh, really showing off his roots. 10 out of 10 for me. Thanks for the watch party, General Theory. What's up, Charlie? Glad you could join. 10 out of 10. Very Western episode from the train robbery to Dances with Wolves. Feeling so much delving into the culture, into the Raiders. Bro, imagine voting no on the poll. 5% voted no, no, but we got over 6,000 people that voted uh, entirely, and 95% of you loved it. Boba Fett on that Sigma male grind set. Uh, think we'll see Tuscans with their masks off? Uh, maybe. It's possible. But it would be kind of weird. Don't you think? That Tuscan babe's got to be hot under them robes. I can't be the only one. Yeah, she's probably not. The story can't simply be Boba's desire to run a syndicate. We haven't explored his motivation at all. Maybe give the planet back to the Tuscans? Well, you gotta think, Tatooine isn't his only goal. I think his goal is to be as big as the huts, as big as the huts or bigger. Not literally, not physically. That's impossible. Yo, Theory, huge fan. My guess is that his connection to the tribes of the Tuscan and him being a member is something the Huts will not see coming, or as they say in Dune, desert power. You mean other tribes? Uh, yeah, that's true. Maybe now he's got like a warring tribe against the Huts, and the Tuscans now will have to be on his side. You know, that's what I think. I think that he has essentially a clan. Of his own. So he like he wants to be crime lord or whatever. King of the underworld. But he is first starting off being essentially. He's probably going to be leader of the Tuscans. Or at least that tribe. And then move on and grow and grow and grow. Hey Theory, what did it say on Boba's armor when he was talking to the mayor? Mm, I don't know. On his armor? I'm not sure. I gotta watch it again. Back to the Future 3 vibes with Boba hijacking the train. I traced something on a piece of paper, cut it out, taped it as a blade to my lightsaber handle, showed it to Mingna when she was laughing. It's cool that you got to meet her. So in Mandalorian Season 1, when Mando and Kiel were... Oh, dude, I remember that. I missed that guy. Where in Tatooine, they came across the Sand People and Kiel said that they needed safe passage. Maybe Boba set that rule. Um, it's possible, but I feel like pretty much everybody has needed safe passage from the Tuscans. Maybe just, you know, they wouldn't have to pay a toll, but, uh, you know, look at Luke. If Vader was alive, he'd totally fire Boba by now. Why do you say that? I wonder if in Kenobi we're going to be able to see Vader just go ham on the Tuscans when he goes to, if he goes to Tatooine. I mean, he did in the comics, so why not? Lost my spot. There we go. I don't give a f what all the haters are gonna say. 
this was such a beautiful episode and I got chills watching the campfire scene. Proud Fett fan. Me too, buddy. You and me both. Don't the Tuscans worship Vader as a god? Uh, one tribe does, yeah, because he slaughtered all of them. Okay, think about this. What if we get a flashback of the leader of the Tuscans where he survived and can slaughter? Just a thought. Yeah, like one ran away. Maybe like a youngling who ran away. Wouldn't that be wild? Do you think Chrysanthemum will match up against Boba or Fennec? Much love, man. I literally live for your watch parties. Oh, thank you, dude. Thank you, Chimpo. I think Black Chrysanthemum is going to kick Boba's ass and Fennec, and Boba may need the help of someone, maybe Cad Bane. Don't know. Love the ending, especially because the Sand People are native and they were doing their thing, and it touched me a lot because I'm indigenous as well. Inuk just got my traditional tattoo last month. Dude, cool. Right on, man. Much love. Thanks for doing the watch parties. Always love tuning in. Since we saw Black Chrysanthemum, do you think we could see Dr. Aphra at some point until next week? Um, maybe. I haven't really followed the story of Dr. Aphra. I don't really know where she is right now in this timeline. Um, does anyone know? John F. and Favreau, ladies and gentlemen. Yes. Sometimes your guys' comments get hidden automatically because they're swearing, but I don't... Well, yeah, except for that, guys. <laughs> okay. Do you think the two people in the bar mean anything? Yeah, so those two people were Luke's friends from episode four in a deleted scene. I just love Tamora. What were their names again? Chat? Forgot their names. What were their names? Ah. Uh, someone just said it too. I just love Tamora. For your breakdown, train attack was homage to Terminator 2. Biker gang, Boba went in, took their boots and their motorcycles. All right, I'll throw that in there. It just struck a different chord in me. So much heart and tradition mixed into it. Such beautiful storytelling. It was just a pure work of art. Yeah, it's very easy to get me when you play something that's um, got a lot of honor and uh, pride in it. I, I don't know why I re really resonate with that stuff. Maybe in a past life or something. Who knows? Just like finding a kyber crystal and building a lightsaber. Can't say I'm too educated in New Zealand indigenous culture, but looked like Tamora was play, paying tribute to his culture with the Hakka face during that last part. Yeah, he had that in the Mando season two as well. Cami and Fixer. Okay. Thanks, boys and girls. Yeah, I think he definitely plays a lot of tribute to that. And if you see him during his fan meetups, like he definitely, he's done Hakka before. So I feel like he's putting some of that into his performance as well. Favorite episode of all time. Me too. Favorite episode of any Star Wars show. I've been mostly unimpressed by most of Disney stuff. I honestly think The Mandalorian was way overrated. I don't think it was overrated. I think the reason it was so hyped up was because of Baby Yoda. Because everyone was like, he's so cute. But she was. And it's, you know, it's a Yoda. We only have seen two of them ever. Welcome, Josh. Josh better shut his mouth about beta fet now, JK. Going to bed now. Gotta go to the DMV in two hours. This was so amazing and beautiful. This is going to get insane. Much love. Good night now. I told you guys, man. Just gotta give it time. Gotta give it some patience. Gotta give it some love, you know? This episode gives him Kennedy Syndrome. Who? I love how Theory pronounces La Mayo like French mayonnaise. Oh, yeah. I don't know. Don't you pronounce lol lol? I don't, know. I don't say LMAO. I say LMAO. True fans of Star Wars love this. Star Wars is back. Yeah, those huts, though, man. That's that's where my mind keeps going back to. Like, the episode was beautiful. Honestly, I can't wait to just end this stream so I can go rewatch it. Adam Elliott, what's up? Thanks for being such a fan, dude. Your enjoyment is contagious and positive. I love it. You know, for me, whenever I watch Star Wars, it does the same thing it does for everybody else. Like, it, I don't see this as a job. I don't see, like, what I do is, like, Oh, I gotta, I gotta wake up. Yeah. No, dude, like, and I think because whenever I watch Star Wars and whenever there's something new Star Wars that's good, it takes me right back in that time machine of when I was a little kid and I literally just drown out anything in my life. Like, I'm like, nothing matters anymore. So it just like makes me escape and I just get to have fun. And, you know, you forget your age, you forget 
any th sort of problem or anything that's going on in life and you just are dived into that story and for me it's just always been very very natural to just fully go into that world been a subscriber for some years my first watch party loved the episode love what you do theory you're helping through tough times love from norway cool man right on love to see norway someday i love this episode so much character development done in a great way tuscan flashbacks probably over and now the story goes forwards nine out of ten easily easily baby do you think the pikes are working with crimson dawn and now they have to go tell kira that they got their asses kicked by tuscans maybe she gets involved that way yeah, so I think they're going to go back and they're probably going to tell the higher ups and then the higher ups are probably going to send some muscle because they're like, we don't take no shit. And then things are going to get bad. David Gutta says, would you ever do a meetup in Canada 10 out of 10? Yeah, 100%. Let's let the world get back to normal a little bit and I'll be doing meetups everywhere. I like how the mayor said running a family is harder than being a bounty hunter, but then the rest of the episode, we see how he is able to be a part of the Sand People family. <laughs> yeah, well, but also being a crime lord is probably very difficult because you have so many things you need to control. And you probably will have people backstabbing you and betraying you uh, who you don't expect. And uh, it's probably going to be difficult for Boba. Loved it, but feels like a show made for binging, not a weekly. Incoming plot twist. Fennec is the sand person training Boba. No. <laughs> she almost had me for a second. I was thinking, I'm like, could that be possible? I was like, no, but we've seen her in Clone Wars. Do you think it could be sickness rather than injury caused by being an unaltered clone, perhaps? Could make for a subplot of finding the the Camino scientist from Mando to treat him. I don't know, just spitballing. Keep spreading the love and happiness. Big love. Eric, super generous, super chat. That's actually a really cool theory. I don't think it would be sickness from being a unaltered clone. But I think it could be possibly a sickness from... From maybe the Sarlacc. Maybe there was something that poisoned him. And it's been, like, killing him. I don't, I don't know. Or maybe we're going to find out there was something that happened in this five years' time that is making him weaker. Greetings from Arkansas. This is by far my favorite episode. 10 out of 10. This is why I fell in love with Star Wars as a 90s baby. Yo, shout out to 90s babies. Yo, spam one if you're a 90s. No, spam nine if you're a 90s baby. So I was born in 1990. Um, Would have liked to have seen the 80s, but then I'd be really old today. So I'm kind of happy that I'm, uh, you know. I don't, want to, I don't want to say young. I don't feel young anymore. <laughs> I do. Thanks, Theory. Much love. Thanks, Edward. Kenton, what's up? Greg, what's up? So watch party, my birthday, all on the same day. Let's go. Can't wait for this, man. Nice. Happy birthday, dude. Happy Bosk and Dengar show up. Hope Bosk and Dengar show up soon. Yeah, but what if they join Boba to fight Black Sand? Damn, look at all the 90s babies. Yo, what do you think the cutoff is for 90? Like 1997, do you think you're still a 90s baby? Because, I mean, 90s babies, like, we grew up and we were watching, like, the shows, like, Hey Arnold, Recess, YTV, if you're in Canada. Um, I don't know, a whole bunch of other 90s stuff. So it's like, I feel like if you can at least get five years of the 90s, you know, maybe. I'm being a gatekeeper for, for being a 90s baby. <laughs> no, but wait, don't millennials cut off at, like, 1990? I don't know, dude. I don't know. I don't know what the cutoff is. Is it 1999? Boba on Death Sticks getting freaky with Groot. The final dance was definitely Ma Maori inspired. Morrison is, of course, Maori. It actually, I actually wondered where he got his weapon when he showed up in The Mandalorian, so it's cool to see how he obtained the staff. Great episode. I'm very invested. I'm more invested in this episode than Mandalorian, I gotta say. I had a feeling the greater Hut cartel would show up, and so glad that happened. Love the episode. Also, my first watch party. Love you, Theory. Dude, the Huts showing up really... See, that's, that's I think, what makes Star Wars very exciting. So, first of all, like, when we had Kylo Ren, then we saw Snoke. We're like, oh, wow, there's a, there's a bigger bad guy than the bad guy. So now we have Boba, and then we have a power struggle. It's not just him trying to get respect. It's the freaking Huts that come in. So you see, if the huts came in in the first episode, you'd be like, this is kind of fast. 
you want to establish a little bit first, right? So, and, and that first episode, apparently, there were only supposed to be six episodes in total. That first episode was really just made um, as a prelude. So it was lit literally like an episode zero. I would love to see Mace Windu make an appearance with his and Papa Palpatine's lightsaber. That would be the plot twist. Also, maybe see Luke too. I want to see Luke. If you haven't seen my Instagram photo um, made by Guille, go check it out. It's a fan uh, fan art. Oh, yo, by the way, do you think right now we could do this? So I'm at 399... Sorry, 299k. Um, can we hit 300k right now? I mean, I probably only need like a few hundred more. And then we get that rounded 3 mil and 300k on IG. It would be pretty dope. This is silly, but I appreciate them keeping the hair and stash styles similar to the 70s, 80s when the OT was made. Me too. Yeah, that was something that's very important. There are so many little things that you may not notice that are really important that they keep the continuity of. Otherwise, it just, um, you notice things, you know, it's like CGI. Like if the face is off a little bit because we know faces so well, it just looks weird. Thanks, Theory, for everything. I follow you for almost three years now, man. Time flies. I love the episode, and I got big Shadows of the Empire vibes with that hover train scene sending love from Quebec. Yo, Quebec! What's up? I'm over here in Vancouver, man, on the West Coast. Love you guys in the East Coast there. Leon Ward. Seeing Slave 1 leave Camino was awesome. 10 out of 10. Adam Elliott, thanks again, man. How old would Kira be if she were to show up? I feel like way older than Amelia Clark, right? Uh, yeah, so how old was she in Solo? She was like 20-something, no? So she was 20-something. This is how many years later? This is, uh... uh... Geez, when was Solo? How many years before A New Hope? Um... I can't remember. I think it's like five years before A New Hope. Right, so that would make her one, six. Uh, that would make her like ten years old. She'd be like late thirties, probably now, like forty, something like that, like forty-five, forty, forty-five. Did we hit three hundred k? I'm gonna refresh live. Did we do it? Yo, damn! Thanks, dude. That's sick. It's been sitting on 299 for like ever. Yo, thank you. Appreciate it. That's awesome. I'm gonna make a post about it. Thank you, dude. Dude, like, it's like there's one person. Thank you, thousands or hundreds. I'm gonna rewatch this episode again. I feel like I missed a hidden detail. Yeah, me too. It's gonna take me a while to do that breakdown. Steve, I know if you're watching this, you're gonna be up late, buddy. Sorry. Do you think Boba's trip was actually just the force? No, dude, he was tripping out hard. The Knights of Tuscans over the Knights of Ren. Yes. Alpha Fett. Well, you, need, you know what? His literal name is Alpha. Omega. And he's the first one. He's His name was Alpha, and they just named him Boa. My favorite part of the episode was being able to see another species culture of fantastic world building. Yep. What up, Adam? Thank you again, man. I'm part caring what other people think. Boba is amazing. You're doing amazing rallying us. Thank you for sharing those experiences with us. Also, I... Bought the Boba Cup, lol, 10 out of 10. Oh, thanks, man. Hey, it's not a Boba Cup. Okay, It's a crime underworld king, okay? Um, and as for rallying you guys, yo, I just want to take a minute and say, like, my job isn't to rally you guys up. Um, it's just to share with you how I feel. If I'm really, like, not feeling something, I will always share it. If I'm really feeling something, I'm going to share it. So right now, I'm really feeling this episode and this show, and I'm really happy about it. You know, it makes me feel like a Star Wars fan. Has the assassin group been seen before? I don't think we've seen their group before, have we? Oh, lost it again. Damn it. I want to make sure I get all of your guys' messages. Uh, there we go. Sorry, Tyler. It does that sometimes. Sometimes I'll scroll one click and it just... Goes to the bottom. Um, yeah, I gotta watch again, and I'm gonna do some research to see if we've actually seen that clan. But I don't think we've seen them before. Don't 
I love the use of sign language. Was that legit sign language though? Or was it just made up? Was that actual sign sign language? Does anyone here know sign language? Nightwind confirmed. Is it possible Omega will show up? You have been our chosen one since before episode seven. Thanks, dude. What if there was an alpha, but the Caminos did something to him and gave Django the second clone, Boba? Oh, no, because um, uh, Tech even says he's like Alpha was uh, his his other name is Boba. So, yeah, we could probably see Omega, probably at the very end of the season. Don't mind the ambush, but he could have jumped with her. That's true. Yeah, why didn't he do that? Hutz showed up and Boba didn't even flinch. Yeah, dude, because he's not little Boba bitch. He's dope. Yo, Leon. Yo, Theory. Love your content, man. Been a fan for a couple years now. Nerd Theory is awesome. Can't wait to tune in with you again next week. I'm very excited for Nerd Theory next week. Hope you guys will all tune in. What doesn't make sense is how they talk about Huts are always paraded around, but in episode four, we see Jan a slugging around Jabba slugging around the Falcon. Nitpicking, I know. Yeah. You got a point. I don't think Crimson Dawn will show up. The first issue of Crimson Rain takes place between ESB Return of the Jedi says that it will tell how Crimson Dawn falls. Mm. Yeah, but, but there's probably remnants. You know, there's probably like a few stragglers. Is a Maori myself seeing Tamura in this story? Story lane? Storyline? Centered around indigenous people in Star Wars was amazing. Thanks, Disney, and thank you for covering theory. They did a tremendous job with that, dude. I really, really respect natives and uh, all around the world. You know, they were the first ones of their country. And I love that. You know, I love the... They're just more spiritual. And I feel like a lot of... Uh, well, not to, not to get deep, but yeah, this is something I studied in, in college and for a reason. It was cool, man. It was interesting learning about other tribes and other peoples. Loki was waiting for my boy to lay down the gaffy stick on that thick raider. But in all seriousness, I've only seen one pic of them without masks. Yeah, I haven't really seen their faces. I don't know what they look like. The train raid is also a callback to the train raids from Lawrence of Arabia. Also, the story of Boba welcomed the Tuscans by Tuscans is just like Lawrence of Arabia becoming... El Orans, great to share this moment. You know, I gotta watch Dances with Wolves. I was literally thinking of watching that movie, like, probably a month ago. I remember seeing it. I think it was on Prime. And I'm like, I'll watch it later. So I'm probably gonna watch it tomorrow night. We will see the Kersantan in Kenobi if as that fight, as they fight it out in the comics. Yeah, that's actually, I believe, how he got his scar from Kenobi. It goes back to Star Wars roots by being mostly unsubtitled alien language, much like holiday special and Ewok movies. Lizard's scene was beautiful. I think two people in the bar were supposed to be Lone Star and Vespa. <laughs> uh, it's gonna be <laughs> it's gonna be Bosk that helps him, if anyone. Suspense for present day with a great backstory. Nine point six out of ten. Easy ten for me, buddy. Easy ten. Easy ten. When will Watto make an appearance? I hope soon. Chris Malik, thanks, man. Yo, Haroldson. Do you think Bosk might help Boba and Fennec fight Black Chrysanthemum since Trandoshans and Wookiees don't get along? I could see that. I could see that. I want to see a big shout out, big shootout for the finale with the Huts hitting. Hiring Cad and the Wookiee vs. Boba and Dengar and Bosk come to his side. At like the last moment. You know, it would be cool for him to fight with Cad. But I think it would be even more cool to see him fight against Cad Bane. Well, no, actually with him would be pretty dope. If they're like both really outnumbered. Appreciate you and Denim Nerds doing these streams. It's fun to get your takes after the shows. I am just stoked for Star Wars to get to the Thrawn tease. We were promised a year ago. You guys rock. Thank you. Uh, wait for Ahsoka, man. Theory is the best Star Wars guy, hands down. <laughs> Love your content and personality. The haters for Book of Boba Fett are straight tripping. This episode was awesome. Well, 
I definitely agree with you. The episode was awesome. I don't know if I'm the best Star Wars guy. I don't know uh, what it takes to be a Star Wars guy. I think we're all the best Star Wars guys and gals. Uh, just as long as you're a Star Wars fan, you know, you're, uh, you're a Star Wars fan. That's it. Thanks, dude. I appreciate the love. Fesh Pints. Wow, that was an amazing episode, by the way. I've been watching you since 2018. Oh, thank you so much for still watching me. The Tuscan women are very badass. Yeah, I think she is a woman. Greetings from Italy. Italy! What's going on? Oh, I should say, I see the Euros. I see the Euros. How's Italy doing? My favorite city. One of my favorite cities in the world is Florence. Beautiful. Beautiful city. Totally unrelated, but where would you rank Plo Koon in terms of combat ability amongst the Jedi during a Revenge of the Sith? Uh, okay, so if Anakin was a level 9 which uh, I believe Nick Gillard said that he was, uh, which is something, something George said in the, the uh, making of. Uh, I would probably rank Plo Koon like A6. Maybe a 7. Mm. 6.5. Boba seems to be making a lot of enemies so far. Yeah, good. That's what you want. Is the Daimyo higher in ranks than the mayor no but he is he's the most powerful you know he calls the shots he's the gangster you know so he's got the most muscle so i feel like you got to kind of respect him for that you know there's there's just some people you don't cross but where is Muchi? what would better have her thanks for being a motivation and someone that brings light to my life in my hardest time Oh, dude, Oliver, man, we, we all have shitty times and, uh, you know, I have them too. And I'm just glad we could all come together and, you know, vibe out and hang out and watch some Boba together and Kenobi soon. Love your work. I feel those sticks. Just having a carved wooden head instead of metal is less badass. Thoughts? Mm. Solid wood can really hurt, dude. I mean, it could crack your skull. It could leave you devastated and plus it has like a sharp piece so and then the end is like literally a spear so big shout out for 1990 that's my year two i want to try that lizard hallucination yeah i'd be down if they got that if, if i come across a tuscan tribe and they're like this will guide you i'm like all right put it in thanks double down very generous don't know I just got done with this episode, and boy, did I laugh my butt off. 100 out of 10, birthday to today, today, birthday today to 90s kid too. Happy birthday, man. So happy to see the Hutt's back. Sheesh, y'all making me feel old. I remember seeing Empire Strikes Back in the theater as a five-year-old. Uh, so that would make you 1975, which means you are 47. That's not old. You're still in your prime, baby. What if Crimson Dawn killed the tribe? Like the Tuscans? Then I guess they wouldn't be there. Do you think we'll get any original trilogy references or characters in flashbacks? Probably. Yeah. I think we'll see Luke, bro. Were the Hutts conjoined twins? <laughs> no? Why? Because he had his hand on her, like... Not her leg. Her, uh... Tail? I don't know. What do you what do you call that? What's up, Theory? So much honor and tradition in this episode. Loved how they made him craft some of his staff and gave me chills. Was re-watching Mando season one. Did you do watch party for it? Mm, did I do a watch? Yes, I did. I did do a No. Did I do a watch party for Mando season one? I can't remember. Um I might have. It'll be on my channel if I did. Wait. Kenton, thank you, man. Yo, Rekka. Yo, Theory, man, love your content. You have no idea how hard you connect with your fans. Nerd Theory is my shit. Been a fan for years now. Can't wait to tune in next week. Much love from Canada. Yo, love you too, buddy. Fellow Canadian. And, um, yeah, sometimes I don't really know how hard I connect with you guys because it's like, you guys see my face, but I don't get to see yours. But that's why, you know, when things were normal and I did meetups, uh, it was it was really beautiful to, to talk to you guys and see you guys. I remember this one meetup I did actually at Downtown Disney. 
in 2019. And um, for those that stayed at the very end, I took them all to the Vader Immortal uh, VR experience thing. It was cool. It was a really great time. Do you think we will hire? He will hire Din to help. Oh shoot! He could. Will we get Alden as Han at some point, and do we get Asherad Het? Yeah. He could hire Din. That's a really cool idea. I'd love to see that. My first watch party have been up since 4 a.m. in North Ireland, UK. This episode was 10 out of 10. Keep up the great work, Star Wars Theory. Bro, go to sleep, man. This is dedication. I'm so glad to see the Huts back. They're such a crucial part of Star Wars Galaxy. I was glad to see them in the Clone Wars again, especially now figuring what to do with Jabba's Empire. I love how they made them so grandiose, you know? And they're so jiggly. I love it. They're very jolly. You're my favorite YouTuber. I love your energy. Keep doing you. May the force be with you, Theory. Thanks, man. Appreciate the support. And appreciate the 300k on, uh, on what should we call it? Instagram. This episode felt big, and I love that the whole scene with the twins, the Black or Santon, being Alpha AF, episode 2 opens up so much for future episodes. I think so too, and I think first, first episode was really an episode 0, and people just needed to give it a chance, and They'll probably be changing their tune. And be like, it's the best thing ever. If we saw Black or Santin, we have to see Bosk. Can you explain the ritual with the lizard confused? Nothing really to explain. Uh, I guess the lizard guided him to the tree. And uh, he basically opened up his soul and saw a lot of his demons. And uh, that's pretty much it. Pretty much it. Unless there's something in Star Wars about those lizards, but not that I know of. Maybe someone in the chat knows. I was hoping for Muchi the Rancor. Gustavo, thank you. Did you notice when Fennec walked into the palace, they've changed the architecture? There used to be an archway on her right in the OT, and now there isn't? Hmm. Hey, <sighs> Yo, how it gets so late, also love your vids theory, just want to say hey. What's up, Logan? Thanks, dude. Gave me Lawrence of Arabia vibes. A British soldier helping local... Be I'm going to butcher that. Bedouins uh, against technology advanced empire. The Ottomans play Battlefront 1 for more. Speaking about... I got to watch that too. I haven't seen Lawrence of Arabia. I know. Yeah. But have you guys seen The Mask? Speaking about Jabba being carried, we only saw him in the docking bay. Not once he got back to the upper streets, he probably was carried there. Yeah, maybe he was just like put back down so that he could walk around. Not walk around. Slug around. Slip around. That scene where the marksmanship with Tuscans are scary but awesome, especially when a train is going 200 plus miles per hour. I, wanted, I want Tag and Bink to be canonized. Thanks, Nine. The train scene reminded me of Ventress and Boba in Clone Wars fighting on the train with Dengar and Bosk. You should make a shaker bottle with Boba theme. Actually, you know what's funny? Uh, Blender Bottle shake sending me their Boba shaker, so I'll show you guys. They usually send me their like new batch, um, but I'll show you guys. I'll show you guys when they arrive. They look pretty cool. I saw some pictures. Did we already talk about the guy and girl in the bar being picked on or Luke's friends from the deleted 1970s? Yeah. Yeah, it's pretty cool. Sand versus high ground versus the Senate. Who wins? Sand always wins. Gets everywhere. The 80s geek. Cool name. Uh, what's up, John? The Huts hire Mando to kill Boba, but instead of killing him, he helps him as he owes him a favor. And Boba gives Mando the Slave One for helping him. You think Boba's going to give Mando the Slave One? Ah. Uh... I mean, it'd be cool in Mando, but it just... Nah, man. Slave 1 is Boba. I wanted to stay with Boba. Bosk and Dengar probably hate Boba because he left them both for dead in War of Bounty Hunters. Not sure if they will follow this. I love your content. They probably will. Probably will. And thanks for the compliment, man. Jamal Jones! Thanks for being the uncorrupted voice in all of this YouTube madness. 10 out of 10 for me for episode 2. Maybe I'm very corrupted. Very cool. 
Respect for the poor weak ways who had to carry the huts around town. It, dude, when they were <laughs> when they were like talking with Boba, they were probably like, "Can you hurry this up? You guys are really heavy." Is Bane still alive? At it's Bane? Oh, Cad Bane. Yeah, he's probably old. I thought Boba killed Cad Bane in the Western like stand standoff some time ago. The dent in his helmet. Yeah, but they didn't fully explain what went down there. So. Until they do, I guess Cad's still alive, and they probably are keeping him alive just for maybe Book of Boba. Deleted Luke Biggs Toshi Station scene inserted into Final Cut on YouTube shows Cami and Fixer. Thoughts on lack of build-up tie-ins to upcoming series and movies. Um, I don't see any lack of build-up or tie-in. Well, every series and movies takes place at a different time, and it covers different characters, so I don't think they need to tie everything in. I did not know Django's armor was not Beskar armor. Mm. I think it was Beskar armor. I think that's a Legends thing, that it wasn't. I'm pretty sure it is. Um... Someone correct me on that if I'm wrong. Absolutely wonderful episode. Wow, just 10 out of 10. Hey, Fear, what's up? Love your content. I feel that Vanessa Kirby from Hobbs and Shaw movie would play Omega perfectly. You think? I think Jim Carrey would play Omega perfectly. The pattern on the roof of the entrance to the mayor's building was the same one similar to the pattern of the roof on Luke's homestead. Well, yeah, architecture is probably similar everywhere. On Tatooine. Aaron Smith, thank you. Wouldn't that be crazy to see Din would explain why his voice was in the trailer? Love you, Harry. Happy New Year. Yeah, so that voice in the trailer was the actual mayor, and it just sounds exactly like freaking Din Djarin. I don't know why. I think that voice is Robert Rodriguez, the guy who directed, but uh, it's just something I heard. I don't know. I could be wrong. Mateo with 50 bucks. Hey, Theory. Love time. Long time follower here. Watching this episode, I got major Last Samurai vibes, especially the scenes where Boba teaches the Tuscans how to stop the train. Thoughts on Boba equal Nathan Algren, Tom Cruise. Yeah, and I think in the end, probably some Tuscan is going to die. Probably the leader, and maybe he becomes the leader. Born in 73, so I experienced all the originals in theaters. I may be older, but wouldn't change my experiences for the world. I love your content. Dude, you got to see an amazing time in the world, you know, when things were probably a little more, uh... Yeah. Uh, envious. I'm envious of you. Rands, 5.30 a.m. here in Moncton, New Brunswick. Fellow Canadian again. Been watching you since Mando Season 2. I love your content. Can't wait for next week. Also, I'm 1999, baby. Hey, you made it. You made it by uh, one year. You made it by one year, dude. Searwolf Compass. Thank you, man. Gabriel says, in flashbacks, he needs to reclaim Slave 1. This episode was so good. I played the alien biker in that bar. Appreciate the content. Oh, yo, Jake. What's up, dude? Wait, which one? Which alien were you? Were you the main one with the uh, denim jacket? Looked like. That's so cool. We got someone from the show here, man. What's up, Jake? He was here last week, too. Hey, bro. Wicked episode. Can't wait for the breakdown. Me either. What's up, Jesse? Yo, what the freak? 200 bucks? Thank you, man. Just watch the episode. Might watch it again with your watch party. Love this episode. Same as the first. Also liked how it was 53 minutes. I hope they are all this long or longer. Love Boba. Like seeing the tribal in Boba. Being from New Zealand, it was cool. Interesting with the huts, too. Can't wait to see more. First of all, thank you, man. That's super generous. And I couldn't agree with you more. I feel like... You know, do you sometimes wonder if they listen or see feedback and then they're, they go and, like, change some things? So maybe this episode was, like, I don't know, 38 minutes. And they're like, okay, they want longer episodes. Let's just add a whole bunch of footage that we weren't going to put in there originally and see how people like it. Could be possible. But... This kind of length for these episodes, especially when they're only seven episodes in a season, I think is, you know, the minimum of what they should be doing. Thanks again, man. And um, New Zealand is a place I'd love to visit. Especially to see uh, the Shire. 
Did the scene in the bar remind anyone of the biker scene in A Bronx Tale? I can't remember. Is it just me or did I hear a crate dragon roar before they saw the train? Also, this episode touched my soul. 10 out of 10 for me. Also, will you do a video on who that Wookiee is? Much love from Australia. Yes, I will do a video on who that Wookiee is. He's pretty cool. So I'm sure you talked about it already, but was that coaxium in the train making it go crazy fast? Because that's what the pike were ref refining back at Kessel. It might have been. Yeah, that's a good eye. I was thinking it's either they either got coaxium on the train or they got spice. And probably both. Big fan since 2015. You're great. When do you think we'll see the first trailer for Obi-Wan and how much Anakin Vader do you think we'll see in the series? I think we're going to see a ton of Anakin and Vader. I think the first trailer probably won't air until like... Mm, don't know. It, their marketing is so unfortunate that I just don't know. I feel like maybe they'll release a trailer in like February or they could do March or if they release Bad Batch Season 2, then probably won't see a trailer until like summertime which is when i think cobra kai season five comes out maybe do you think they'll show boba and his twi'lek -like wifey like from legends i don't know dude lord stewie member for 13 months thanks appreciate that man the trip scene really reminded me of Luca going into cave to face his demons on Dagobah. I love your videos. Always bring super good vibes. Cool, man. Happy to hear that. Do you mean the like when he got the blizzard up his nose? Yeah, I feel like that was basically another cave scene where he just faced everything that feared him as a kid, and then like everything breaking in the explosion. I think was him just kind of being reborn, sort of, and, like, getting rid of all of his demons. Showing hype from Nebraska. Love the stream, brother. Thanks, Cloudy. Are you going to do an explanation on the twins? I really want to know more about them. I want to know more about them, too. I don't really know anything about them. I just know that they're huts. Shout out from Fresno Cali. What are your expectations for the next episode? Expectations for the next episode are, I hope it's... I hope it has less flashbacks as this episode... But also, I hope it has just as much. I want to go forwards, and I want to see what happens with the altercation between Boba and the Huts, and of course, Black Chrysanthemum. On the Cad Bane Western shootout scene, I believe that was cut from the Clone Wars, and Cad Bane was in Bad Batch, so he very well could be alive. Yeah, they recorded it, but they didn't actually they didn't actually edit it and like make it a production and a show. Um, I still want to see some of Dathomir, <clears throat> which would be sweet. Dude, there's so much stuff they they could do and like bring back i hope they do it do you think we'll see Django fett i think we could see him in some flashbacks i mean they got the actor so just put her like a, a wig on him and uh de-age him a little bit and there you got Django. it'd be pretty cool maybe him meeting with dooku dude it'd be so sweet the cool thing about all this stuff is that they can have these flashbacks and they know we love this stuff so sell it man just keep going with it Anyways, I'm going to go and watch the episode again. I'm going to do the breakdown, and it should be out for you guys in roughly 11 hours, 10, 11 hours, something like that, around there. Um, but I love you guys. I had another awesome night with you. Thank you so much for joining the watch party, and I'll see you guys next week for the watch party as well, of course, in the breakdown, which will be up very, very soon, um, probably by the time you guys wake up, or if you're already awake, you'll, you'll see it tonight, your time. Probably around noon Pacific time. Do you think they'll work any of the lore from Kotor about the glassing of Tatooine? Also, didn't the train engine look like it was from Annie's pod racer? It did look like it was from Annie's pod racer, but I think that's just a regular engine. As for them incorporating lore from Kotor, it would be kind of a long stretch, but why not? Make it happen. I'd be down for it. They shoved the lizard up my nose. Now I'm tripping out on the dunes of Tatooine. <laughs> Well, I love you guys. I hope you had a great night. I uh, can't wait to go watch the episode now. I'm going to go make some tea and uh, get to breaking down everything it's, and uh, rewinding. and It's going to be cool. All right. Love you guys. Good night. Have a great rest of your day. Or night.